Hey, Brendan here. Today I am looking at the webhook function in WS form. This is a pro feature in WS form. WS form is a great form builder. It's got a lot of advanced features. Uh, it's it's a, a, a very solid product that's to me underpriced. It's well worth uh, picking up if you need a form builder. Uh, but the action that we're looking at today is webhook. Now webhooks allow you to basically send data from one place to another place. And so uh, we're going to look at that today. And if I come back here to like this contact form on this site that it's just a temp site that I've got I'm working on, and I can use the little debugger in WS form to populate, right? You can populate and submit. You can reset that and you can just populate and submit. And so I will submit that and I'll say thank you for your inquiry. And I will come to my uh, sheet here. And just in the blink of an eye, it has added this to my Google Sheet that I have set up. So we're going to be using active pieces to basically catch the webhook and then insert it into our Google Sheet. So that's uh, essentially what we're going to be looking at today. I will come to my notes here again. So, you know, really any good form plugin will allow you to send data via webhooks to external sources such as Google Sheets, as I just showed, or Airtable or Facebook pages or whatever, wherever you want it to go. Uh, webhooks let you connect applications together, you know, like thinking, thinking in APIs. Um, so yeah, in this tutorial, we'll be using the free version of active pieces and the uh, WS form version has to be pro to, to get the webhooks. Um, okay, so basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating the webhook to receive data from WS form. And we'll create that webhook in active pieces. Then we'll add that webhook in WS form as an on submission action to send webhook. And then we'll just add the active pieces test URL first to get some test data going. I'm pretty sure it does not work unless you do the test URL first and then the live URL. We'll take a look at that more in depth in, in just a few short moments. And then we're going to submit the WS form and see the data come into the WS form. Uh, console, right? We can see that again down here, and that has pushed all the all the way to the Google Sheet. So after that, you can decide what you want to do with it. I pushed it to a Google Sheet, but you can push it to whatever platform you want. Uh, we might get into that at the end. Uh, you know, I'll try and add an additional step so you can kind of see how it works. So let's get started. Let's jump into first active pieces. I'm going to go back to home and I will make a new flow just from scratch. And what we're going to do is create a trigger and the trigger is going to be a core trigger. So instead of like on a schedule, we don't want it to run, you know, every minute or every hour, we want it to run when the form is submitted. So we're going to create this webhook here. All right, so we'll click webhook and the trigger is to catch the data from the form submission and bring it into this flow. So right here, we're presented with the live URL and the test URL. I believe it needs to start with the test URL, at least in my uh, testing of this. Uh, I could not get it to work if I just started with the live. So it's always good to test. So let's do that. I will click copy on this. And what we're going to do is come back to WS form and I will go ahead and make a new form. And let's make a like a testimonial form. I have a testimonial custom post type. So I already have my contact form here. Let's just make a new form. And, um, okay, I don't, I don't have the post type for, I don't have the OBS form for post management. So let's just, that's fine. We'll just use a blank template and we will bring in the, this will be like the person's uh, first name. And this will be last name. And then we'll put the email in. I can drag it. Okay, we'll just click it. <laughs> and we need a submit button. Um, and then let's also put a just a text area one in here. And let's drag that up. Okay, so we have our basic form. And what we also so we need to do is have this uh, right, we've got this action here, this this uh, webhook URL, right? So we need to copy that again. I think I probably still have it copied. But let's go back. And on this form will be, you know, this will be our demo form as the name. 
And up here at the top, there's actions, right? So WS Form has tons of different actions. Right now I have, it, it's gonna save the submission to the WS Form database. It's gonna show that uh, success message and it will send an email. Uh, but let's add another action and let's call this uh, send webhook. Okay, and for the action in this dropdown, we'll pick webhook and the endpoint will post that in. And you'll notice at the end, it has this slash test to let you know this is a test URL. And we're going to post that basically what this is saying we're going to take the data from the form and post it to this endpoint okay so that web that endpoint is ready to accept data and then we need to come down here probably to map the fields here so i'll start mapping that and we'll say first name will be first name and we'll say last name add another one for email let's add one for text area and this will be last name, this will be email, and this will be, I guess, inquiry. Okay, so now those are mapped to fields that will, um, I think it just sends it uh, via, yeah, via JSON. So um, we'll see that data come into active pieces now. So I'll save that and I will publish that. And I will come make a new page here, just um, WS form demo. And let's add a WS form element here. Select our demo form. Perfect, publish that. And let's go view the page. Okay, so it should be ready to go basically. So I will go ahead and populate and submit. And that will submit. Thank you for your confirmation. Let's come back to our flow. Uh, okay, so for, I guess I did not hit test trigger. So let's hit test trigger. And there it is. If you don't, if it does, it was successful, right? I can already see there's the inquiry. There's the name, the first name, and the email from the Jada Upton. That is the test one. Um, there's our submissions. There it is, Jada Upton, right? So our, our, Active Pieces uh, webhook is receiving data perfectly. So that is wonderful. So now that the test is done, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to to get the live URL. I think it's it's just the same minus test. Uh, so I will come back to our form, edit form. This is our demo form. Let me just make sure I refresh because I didn't go back. Um, but in any case, I'm going to come back up to our actions and our webhook. I'll just make that the live URL. And I believe you can just, again, you can just delete the slash test. All right, so save that and publish that. Don't forget to hit publish. That will be the bane of my existence. I've hit save and forgot to publish way too many times that I care to admit. Okay, so let's look at our, let's just, let's just do another submission, right? Let's just come back. Uh, it's not contact form though. It is the form demo. Okay. So let's uh, populate and submit. Uh, webhook. Oh, webhook is not found. Okay. So we. So that's good that we've encountered this error because that lets us know that the live URL is not properly working. And the reason for that is probably because this is not published. Although it shows. Oh, I need another step. So we have our results, um, but we need to add another step. So let's just send this stuff to Google Sheets, okay? So presumably you wanna catch the webhook data and then do something with it, right? So we could do uh, Sheets and we'll say insert a row and I will add it to, I've got a, a test sheet here. Let's just make, um, let's just use the same one. So the title of my sheet is Active Pieces Demos and WS Form August 2024. So let's come back to our Active Pieces and connect to that one. So I just have only one connection here, Active Pieces Demos. And the sheet is WS Form August 2024. So then this little area will, will come down here and you can say what are the values you wanna put in to the various uh, sheets. So First things first, does this row contain headers? Yes, the first row is a header because I have first name, last name, three. This is the header of the sheet. So 
So it if the first row is headers, that that looks fine. Uh, so first name is going to be our body. We'll, we'll we'll grab that webhook data, right? We can grab the body of it. We see first name, and then we see last name, and then we see email, right? Email and inquiry. Okay, test data, and so. Now it should try and push that data into Google Sheets. You can see it was successful, test deemed successful, updated rows one, updated columns four, right? Because we have four pieces of data, but only one row at a time. So if I come back to our thing here, there it is, Jada Upton, there's the email, there's the inquiry. Okay, so now if I come back to our form demo, let me refresh this. So that was just test data. Let's see if this works. Populate and submit. Dahlia Underhill. So it's still saying it's not working. Now, what is the problem? The problem is with active pieces. Again, we were using the test URL before, but now we're using the live URL. But our app in active pieces is not published. So I need to make sure that this is published also. Okay, so then that'll tell me it's uh, viewing the published version. The published version is on. Okay, so now if I come back to our form demo and reload this. I should be able to populate and submit. Thank you for your submission. So it's success, we're no longer getting the error. I can come to my Google Sheet. There's our other uh, inquiry, right? Nico Ironside, let's just do a couple more. So it's sending this data in real time directly to Google Sheets with, uh, with the webhook, right? So there, that's saved. And there's our third submission. So pretty straightforward, I hope, to um, to figure out how to how to get these webhooks to push data sort of wherever you want, right? So um, that hopefully is helpful. Um, it's pretty pretty simple to set up. You just have to use the webhook test URL and then the live URL. Make sure your app's published. The steps to do this are probably pretty similar if you're not using active pieces or ws form if you're using zapier and gravity form it's probably a pretty similar uh use case um and flow for that so one of the benefits of active pieces right is that we can do other steps after this, this is just a, a, a two-step flow right now to catch a webhook and, and send that data into sheets but let's do let's go ahead and, and add something else let's let's just like Select Twitter and I'll select uh, create a tweet. Okay, and I've already connected my Twitter account. If you haven't done that, uh, you'll need to click new account and then follow the directions here. You need to basically create uh, four keys, two API keys and two access keys. Um, so you'll have to do that before you connect. I've already done that. So I will connect to my Twitter account that I made for testing APIs. So now we can say like, Right, we can bring in steps, uh, items from the previous workflows, right? So if we look at um, Sheets, this isn't really the data we want because the data is not being pushed out of Sheets, it's just being pushed into Sheets. So what we actually wanna do is grab the webhook data and we could like pretend that this is a testimonial. So I could say like new testim testimonial from, and then I could say from first name, last name, and then I could put like a colon and then two quotes and I could put my testimonial in between there. I could put like the inquiry right there, right? And so this will, this is the text of the tweet. So the tweet will say, you know, new testimonial from uh, Jada Upton, and then it'll have the body of the testimonial, right? So that should be working perfectly. I will go ahead and test that. That should work, right? So it says success. If I come back to my test Twitter account, don't have any posts here. I will refresh. And there it is, new testimonial from Jada Upton. I can see here, I forgot a space between these two, right? So I can come back to my tweet and make sure that there is a space. Oops, uh, right there, space in between. Okay, so that is working, right? The data is flowing. I will go ahead and publish that. So now we've taken our form submission and it's sending to Google Sheets and then it's also creating a tweet at the same time. So now that that's published, I should be able to come back to, let's just come back to our pages, come back to our demo form page. 
And this time I'll put my own name, Brendan Connell, and make up an email. This is my what this is my testimonial, I guess, right? Something like that. I will go ahead and submit that. Thank you for your submission. Let's go ahead and check our sheet to make sure it's pushed into here. There it is, Brendan O'Connell. You can see it coming in real time. There it is. And if we come back to our Twitter feed, our profile, I'll go ahead and refresh this. And there it is, new testimonial from Brendan O'Connell. This is my testimonial. So, so hopefully this gives you an idea of like all the possibilities that you can do with these types of actions that um, basically sending data from one place to another and being su super efficient, organizing your data, having, having it in multiple places, right? So it's sort of like a backup of your data. And then you can choose if you want to use it throughout your workflows, if you want to push it to social media, if you want to push it to, uh, you know, your your various uh, internal apps and things like that. So you or, or as I did here, right, public publish it uh, publicly, if you want to have a testimonial and you want to alert people that, that you're, you're getting great testimonials, but you don't have to do it manually. Well, here's your solution. So hopefully this makes sense. It's a pretty simple flow. It's just, you know, catching that webhook, putting it into Google Sheets and then creating this tweet. You can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, I highly recommend checking out. This is, um, this is just using the free version of active pieces. If I come back to my home here, we can see I've only used seven tasks. So that's probably just, I don't know if that's updated actually, but um, in any case, uh, we're well within our thousand task limit. If you ever go over this, it's just another $1 for another thousand tasks. So uh, anyway, there is um, WS form. Uh, WS form uh, submissions with webhooks. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. All right. Take care.